Uh, when did you first meet James Harris? That's a good question. The way it happened, I was actually managing Kendo Nagasaki in Florida. And Jerry Lawler used to leave the Memphis area and travel to other territories. And he had the reputation of you know, being an international star. So he came down to Florida and he would work the big shows once a month in the Bayfront Center. And we did something where we taped it, where Lawler and Kendo Nagasaki had a controversial match and I was involved and it ended up with the return match. I refused to give him a return match. We took the Southern title from him and I refused to give him a rematch and built up interest. And finally they said that uh, I think it was Memphis I outbid everybody else finally for the return match and that uh, Bob Goggle, the president of the NWA, had finally overruled me and forced me to have to agree to the return match. Well, at the time, you know, the territory up there was struggling, so they were going to bring Kendo up, but couldn't afford the second airline ticket to have me come up and be in his corner. So they right. asked me if, if I could do the interviews, almost like I was going to be there, but not promising that I would be there and then not fulfilling it, but kind of making it sound like that I was going to be there when, when in fact the night of the match you know I wouldn't be there when they had the match in Memphis Memphis had been struggling and if memory serves me right I think they sold out Memphis you know that one thing just was the beginning of turning the whole territory around and so they they then decided well they didn't want to immediately reverse the title back to Lawler so they worked out some kind of uh, funky finish and they called me and they said well we sold out and we thought well we can't blow it off we did something for a return and could you do another interview and allude to what happened and i said yeah sure i'm eddie was happy to have me do an extra promo and, and mail it up there and so this went on for a couple of weeks for return matches and yet i was never actually there and the fans up in memphis <laughs> started asking <laughs> questions about well they're seeing me on the interview and kendo's there but i'm not and so finally they were going to have to blow it off with kendo and then they uh, lower and and, and Jarrett talked and they said, well, why can't we create our own Kendo Nagasaki like character. Jim Harris had been wrestling there years before and he had been in England finished up in England and just made a living but didn't really have a lot of money and he came back and he was going to show up with an extra pair of tights to sell. I mean that's how tight things were. Right. So and what happened was a return match between Kendo Nagasaki and Lawler. They ended up getting three matches out of it where I would do the interviews but I actually wasn't there in the corner and finally i claimed you couldn't get away with it now where basically i was going to be there and somebody called in a bomb threat on my flight and right. my plane was held up and i was uh, can't use that reason no more <laughs> yeah I, I said i got there and jumped out of my limo and was running towards the arena and i said i was overrun by people running out saying that lawler had defeated kendo so i was now like oh this is this is too much you know they they held me up from getting there and the only reason they beat kendo was because i couldn't be there in his corner and then uh -huh. that's when i talked about being on safari in africa and looking out in the window and seeing this big witch doctor that had all the natives down on their hands and knees bowing to him i said you know he's going to be my newest mind but i've been reluctant to take the wraps off him i said to be honest with you i don't think i've completely cleared him of his some of his cannibalistic ways but i said the way that they've treated me with what they did with Kendo Nagasaki, I said, I don't care. I'm sending this guy anyway. That's a <laughs> and I love then, it. There wasn't really a Kamala. Jim came back from England from what the way it was described to me. Yeah. And all of a sudden they looked and they said, here's this big guy. And they took and painted a banana on his belly and something else and created the character in the dressing room and then had me do the interviews for him. It went from where they had to finally beat Kendo Nagasaki. But then I said that I was going to turn this, this cannibal loose on him for retribution. And then that's how Kamala got started. And I was doing interviews every week for Kamala. And then finally they said, Said, well, the people are going crazy about when are we going to see you? You're you're doing the interviews for him, but you're never there in his corner. And I said, yeah, I'm working in Florida. I work for Eddie Graham. So they called Eddie, and Eddie said, Well, Monday is West Palm. I can afford to let him go. You know, fly him up there. And so that's how that finally happened. And by the time I got there, I had been seen on TV for a couple months. They created this mystique about me, and because I had been seen on TV but not in the towns, so I had a nice run where they would fly me up there on a Monday. You know, they were doing sellout after sellout. Out. So it's just one of the crazy stories. The stories are original and unique, and this is as original and unique as any of them.